So often, when pro-lifers are presented with difficult circumstances by those that they are speaking with, they think immediately of others in their own lives or those that they know who have encountered, navigated, and overcome similar circumstances. How do you share these personal or known circumstances in a conversation without refuting and without resolving yet? Stay tuned. Hi folks, welcome back to the Pro-Life Guys podcast, a show dedicated to equipping you with the tools that you need to have compassionate and compelling conversations about abortion so that together we can change minds, save lives, and transform our culture. My name is Cam. I am the host of the show. It is a joy to have you along for the ride. And we are diving into how and when to share personal experiences and the experiences of those that you are familiar with, whether they are friends or family members, whether you've heard about them in the news. When do you share about the fact that there are people who have been confronted with difficult pregnancies and have overcome the challenges and difficulties that they have been presented with and that you can do it? I I think often, um, I know that I've shared this story on the show before for any longtime listeners we have. Um, one of my wonderful, wonderful volunteers here in Calgary. Her name is Denise. Um, she's around the age of my mom. She's a lovely, lovely woman. Um, we've been doing outreach at a number of different places. And I know several years ago, we were doing outreach at one of the high school, senior high schools here in Calgary. And she was surrounded by a group of young girls who were going on and on to her about how difficult and how impossible pregnancy was. And Denise, um, went off script. She went off script and she just looked these girls in the eye and she said, I have had seven children. It is not that hard to have a child. Um, And several of their jaws dropped and they became so fascinated in her experience. And she was able to to share all about her, um, her parenting experience and whatnot. I don't generally um, in Um, encourage that in that exact way. But how do you share your personal experiences or experiences of people that you're familiar with in a way that will be productive for the conversation? Well, we want to avoid leveraging our personal experiences in a way that really fits into the refutation or resolution um, pitfalls that we often encounter. Um, So often when we think of refutations, we think of callous and and very hardened response. Oh, that's a dumb reason for supporting abortion. Um, if only you knew logic or something like that. And yet there are very soft ways of refuting um, circumstances, right? That if somebody says to me that they think that abortion should be allowed for a mother who's encountering poverty, and I said, oh, well, my family experienced poverty all the way through our childhood. And, and I mean, we, we made it. And we were able to navigate it, and it wasn't fun, and it wasn't enjoyable. However, we we got here. Um, it's doable. That's a very gentle and kind refutation. What we're still saying is that their argument is not logical, it's not appropriate, it's not sufficient, because it can be done. Not only does that still kind of reject it out of hand and really, in some ways, still provoke the confrontational attitude of you are wrong, that's a bad reason, recalculate, rethink your life decisions and whatnot. Um, But it also generates something of a he said, she said kind of dilemma of, okay, well, I'm glad that you and your family were able to, to navigate it. Me and my family weren't. I grew up in poverty and my brother or sister died of starvation or I'm glad that you were able to navigate this. Clearly, your circumstance wasn't as bad as my circumstance or this circumstance or that circumstance. It gets into a lot of he said, she said. And so it's not going to be productive to use your personal experience and weaponize them in a manner of reputation. Similarly, we don't want to resolve quite yet. We don't want to leverage our circum- our, our experiences and say, oh, um, I'm so sorry to hear that your family is living in poverty. Have you explored this option or that option or or have you called these people or have you asked for money from this place or, or whatever? We don't want to do that quite yet because, again, abortion is not wrong because there is support available. Abortion is not wrong because we can help you. Abortion is wrong because it kills an innocent human being, regardless of how comprehensive and thorough and accessible our support may or may not be in that moment. 
Because if they say to you, yes, I have called all those places and they were not helpful or they were not sufficient, then you're right back at the drawing board. And so how do you want to approach conversations and um, allow these personal experiences to be productive in them? Well, the first thing that I want to encourage you to do is to integrate them simply in the common ground. You know, I agree with you that poverty can be incredibly difficult. Me and my family or best friends of mine, or I've heard stories of people who have navigated all kinds of incredibly difficult um, situations because of poverty, because of sexual assault, because of whatever circumstance you have brought up, period. Not as a refutation, but as a way of demonstrating that you are able to understand in some ways what they are bringing forward. And I think that it's important to remember in some ways, right? It, it's uh, There's few things more frustrating when people tell us that they know exactly what we're going through because they've gone through something similar. Human experience is incredibly different based on who we are and what we're going through and, and different factors combining at the same time. We don't want to convey that we believe we know exactly what they're thinking of or exactly what they're going through. But we do want to communicate that we do know some degree of what they're going through, that we understand in some ways what they are encountering or what that theoretical person that they might be bring, bringing forward would be encountering. I agree that poverty is incredibly difficult. You know what? I, I grew up in poverty and I, I know that it's an, an incredibly real crisis facing a, a crazy number of Canadians in today's day and age. Boom demonstrate that we too can empathize with this scenario. And obviously that leads into being able to draw on some of those experiences and details into our analogy. Um, I agree with you. This is what happened for me and my family. Imagine that in my situation or somebody living in a similar situation to mine, consider killing a born child because of those factors. Would we ever suggest that would be okay? Well, no. And if we can't kill a born child, why a preborn child? Flowing into the human rights argument, if necessary, dropping down into human plus X and age or ability-based discrimination. And so that's the first place that you can allow your personal experience or personal experiences that you are familiar with to draw into your conversation. And that's going to be the main point. The second point is going to be at the very end of your conversation to offer something of the bookend, the beginning and the end of your conversation. Once you have drawn somebody towards the pro-life worldview, then similarly, if somebody's in a moment of crisis or if somebody is thinking about abortion as a viable option, we are able to then begin resolving those scenarios. And so we can allow our experience to help resolve some of that difficulty once they've recognized it that abortion is a human rights violation. We can share, okay, well, I'm glad, glad that you and I can now agree that abortion is a human rights violation. Bearing that in mind now, have you ever connected or are you familiar with XYZ supports and resources and opportunities for healing, for support, for engagement, whatever it may be? Um, we're able to share it in a resolution kind of way. Additionally, we can share it no longer as a refuting kind of way, but rather as an inspiring kind of way. Um, now that we agree that abortion is human rights violation, who inspires you? Who, who really um, makes you want to live better and, and be better? And when I think about my mom and what she went through, when I think about this friend of mine and what she went through, or this friend of mine and what he went through, whatever it may be, I think it's incredible, and I think that that comes from a knowledge that abortion is a human rights violation, or comes from a knowledge that that solution to that challenge or problem is not appropriate, and so they didn't take the easy and bad or wrong way out, but rather the hard but good way through, and we can allow our um, personal experiences and those that we are familiar with to shed light upon and inspire and empower people to do amazing and courageous things with the support of the community around them together. And so to put a bow on that, I know this is a shorter episode. To put a bow on that again, we are going to share our personal experiences, first and foremost, in the common ground to demonstrate that we have an understanding in some ways of the hardship that mothers and fathers may be faced with. Those details may flow into the analogies that we share and even into other parts of our conversation. And finally, 
uh, we're able to, once they come to reject abortion as a human rights violation, we're able to come back towards the resolution and share with them resources that may be available that you yourself or others that you know may have found beneficial and meaningful while they navigated challenging pregnancies or other challenging life circumstances. And additionally, you can share it no longer as a refutation, but rather as an encouragement and, and an inspiration being able to really um, boost and and help people consider the fact that good things can be difficult and difficult things are worth pursuing, especially when they are so good, especially when we can do it together and that the community, that the, the village can come together to raise a child, to navigate challenges and difficulties, all that kind of thing. I hope that makes sense. If ever you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me on socials or at email at prolifeguys.com. There are lots of upcoming Pro Life Guys talks and presentations that I'll be offering throughout Western Canada primarily, but other places around um, Canada and the world too. And so stay tuned for those. May God bless you abundantly wherever you're at, however many hours are left in your day.